Jesus says, but I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you, didn't, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Lord, as you open your word to our hearts, open our hearts to your word. Amen. Today is Bible Sunday and we're thinking about the Bible. Originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek and then translated by people such as William Tyndale into many, many different languages, and in recent times, into modern language. There are so many facts about the Bible, but I just want to dip into the Bible and think about three aspects, three aspects that reflect my interests, music, family history and nature. I have to admit that the wars and battles in the Bible are not on my favourites list, but I do read about them when they are on the daily readings. So first, music. The Bible is full to the brim of music, songs, hymns, chants, laments. And we see the development of music from the early times of trumpets, of trumpets being blown, of drums drumming, to more complex structures and more complex singing as we get through into the New Testament and we hear about Paul singing hymns while he is in prison. If you looked at the Bible, I wonder which piece of music would be your soundtrack to your life. For me, it's Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills, which is where my help comes from. The Lord is watching over me. Which bit of the Bible, which is in song, would be your soundtrack of life? And then family history. I find family history fascinating. And the Bible is full to the brim of fascinating families with God as their Heavenly Father watching over them when life is calm and when life's storms hit. So many families to choose from in the Bible. As I look through it, I wonder which family in the Bible is your favourite family? For me, it's the family of Ruth and Boaz. There is so much in that story about family life, about families caring for each other, about family life not always being easy, about family life where the story has a clear understanding of God walking alongside each member of that family. In earlier years, I identified with Ruth, but now as I'm older, I identify with Naomi. Naomi, who told Ruth, don't worry about me, don't come with me, you stay here and start your own life. Naomi, who wanted the best possible life for her descendants, Naomi, a caring, compassionate shepherd of her family. Then finally, nature. Nature runs right through the Bible, from the story of creation to the Garden of Gethsemane and beyond. It's all around us. And this week, my grandson has been fascinated by the rain. Each morning as we've left the nursery, he's turned his face to the sky to feel the raindrops on his face. He smiled and laughed. It's made me think about water an important part water plays in the nature of the Bible. The water of baptism cleansing us of our sins, rain feeding the dry land, the water being divided as Moses led his people to the promised land, rain that sustains the natural world. So again, if I ask you to think of your favourite nature passage in the Bible, which would it be? At this moment in my life, my favourite passage is the stilling of the storm. As I read that story, I feel a sense of peace as God stills the storms of my life. So I invite you to think of three aspects of your life, three things that interest you, and dip into the Bible. Find those interests there. They will be there somewhere. Maybe listen to the music. Maybe read about a Bible family. And maybe as you're thinking about the Bible readings, turn your face to the rain 
and feel the cleansing power of the water of life. My prayer for us this week echoes our gospel reading, that our searching may inspire us to complete the life work God has given us and encourage us in the very works that we are doing, so through them we may testify to God who has brought us here to be fed and sent out again. Amen. On this Bible Sunday we give thanks for the scriptures and we give thanks for all whose role it is to help us to make sense of that word, to interpret it for these days, to bring it to a wider audience. We pray for the way in which we interact with the word ourselves, that you would enable us to read and pray reflectively, seeking you, seeking life in the words that you give. We continue to pray for those in government and for public health officials, for all who work within the medical service. In a week in which we have seen virus cases rise and concern about what steps need or need not to be met to be done. We pray for wisdom for all of those involved. We pray for the Queen with concerns over her own health, giving thanks for these years of service that she gives and continues to give to the life of this nation. And during this coming week, the Chancellor will give his budget amidst rising economic concerns, rising inflation and uh, so on. We do pray for wisdom. We pray for leaders in the world of business and industry in those huge decisions that they make. And we pray for all of those who are concerned about where their money is going and whether they will have enough for, the base, for their basic needs week by week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for this Sunday. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>